I never pitch. I don't sell things I haven't written yet. Um, and I'm able to make a living just with my personal projects and I'm not without having to work as a teacher or anything like that. So I guess that is success, but it's not like I'm writing bestsellers. I mean, I, I live on very little money, you know, and that's, I think, part of the key of being successful as a writer is writing good books and keeping your expenses really low. The book that first got me attention was actually my fourth book, which is called, a novel called Happy Baby. It was co-published by McSweeney's and McAdam Cage, but it kind of got lost in the shuffle. McAdam Cage was distributing it, and it, got, it had no marketing whatsoever. You couldn't buy it at Barnes & Noble, or you couldn't buy it at Borders, even if you ordered it. You couldn't even order it at Borders. It was totally under the radar. It only got reviewed like four times. But it had this really steady build. Best of the Year list, got nominated for a couple of big awards. It just kept doing better. It gave me a lot of faith, actually, that if you write a good book, it'll find its readership. The Adderall Diaries is a memoir that's also a true crime novel. Uh, it started out where I just didn't know. I had writer's block for a long time. I didn't know what I wanted to write. And then I just started, and I started taking Adderall again, which I'd been prescribed earlier. I went back on it, and um, I was kind of documenting that. And right as I was documenting that, this, uh, this weird murder story entered my life. I had helped a friend uh, look up this guy, Sean Sturgeon, who who was best friends with a famous computer programmer, this other guy, Hans Reiser. This gets a little complicated. Hans Reiser was on trial for murder. Sean Sturgeon was his best friend. And then Sean, and Sean Sturgeon and I, our lives had intersected a lot. I hadn't met him, I didn't think, but we had a lot, we knew a lot of people in common. Uh, it was almost strange how much our lives had intersected. And he came forward and confessed to eight and a half people to killing eight and a half people. So his best friend was on trial for murder and suddenly he was saying that he had also killed eight and a half people. Simultaneously, uh, I had this m unpublished memoir my father had written and my father had also confessed to a murder in his, in his unpublished memoir and I had been researching that for a long time. I was writing whatever came to mind. I wasn't filtering. Um, because I was in a bad place. I had had writer's block, and I, didn't, I, w I wasn't writing to be published. I wasn't writing for publication. I was just writing to get things out of my head and out of the page, which is the original reason I started writing to begin with. I never wanted to be a professional writer. And in fact, I was probably 90% done with the book before I really knew what it was about. I just kept writing, hoping that the answer would at some point present itself. And then, of course, you go back to the book, and you edit it, and you find your threads and your themes, and and these things all circling some larger idea. And uh, but, you know, if you're writing about things that interest you, then they will always meet because you're they meet at you. The Adderall Diaries is a book about writing, and it's about identity, and it's about memoir um, and truth. It's about it's not about murder. It's about false confession. To boil it down, really, really simply though, it's really about identity. And in my case, my identity as a writer. Yeah, I, I've written, you know, I've written seven books. They're all very autobiographical. And the thing about uh, the Adderall Diaries is, I couldn't have written it without having written those earlier books. You know, every time you write a book, it's like you're coming out of the closet. You know, my first book was Jones Inn. It was about doing heroin, so I got that out there. And then my second book, The Life Without Consequences, was about growing up in group homes, so people knew about that. My third book was about sex workers, so, pe so then people knew I had been a sex worker. And then my fourth and fifth books were about sex and my, my own sexuality. And if I hadn't written those books and unpackaged those things, unwrapped those things and explored them, I couldn't have written the Adderall Diaries, because in the Adderall Diaries I moved through those issues, because they're already unpacked. I'm already out of the closet, because you know, writing about, about identity and depression, uh, pharmaceutical, uh, abuse. It's like if you're a transvestite and first you're thinking about wearing a dress, that's all you think about. And then you put on a dress. And then you're thinking about going outside in the dress. And you go outside. And then soon you're just going dancing every night and you can't even remember uh, what it was like to want to wear a dress. Now you can think about other things. Your mind is open. You have the space, you know,
should look at your next closet. What's the next closet you're going to come out of? For me, and I know it's different for everybody, but I'm looking for that vein that when I hit it, it just comes pouring out. You know, so I'm kind of writing around, writing in circles and like looking for that, waiting, for, looking for that moment where everything kind of comes out in a gusher. You know, and that's when I know that I'm on my topic that I need to write about. But it's a, it, it's a, it's very inefficient, you know, and you have to write a lot of stuff that you're never going to use. I write, I write pages of stuff I'm never going to use every day. And so my readership is hugely important to me. You know, the readership is always, your readers are always doing you a favor. At the same time, there's no book in the world that everybody likes. Just like there's no movie that everybody likes. So you have to always been, I'm always trying to write some, my ideal reader's favorite book. I'm just trying to connect with the people that are on the same page as me. And so, but it, writing is about communicating, you know, and but if you're not published, you know, how do you reach your ideal reader? Even if it's a small number, I mean, how do you reach them?